10. Six marks. Simple things, equations, question. Big birdie thing. Bob's lorry. Seven stacks of pavement slabs, three stacks of edging blocks. The total weight of them is 2,400 kilograms. So you don't, to, you don't need to explain what the weight balance is telling you here. Let P be the weight of a stack of paving slabs and E be the weight of the edging block, all in kilograms. So you just translate that. Seven paving slabs, three edging blocks, total 2400. That was it. B. Emran has three stacks of paving slabs and four stacks of edging blocks, and that comes to 1300. Write down an equation to, to illustrate that. There's another mark. Beth has six stacks of paving and five stacks, but what do they come to? Well, you'll need to work out from these two what the weight of those, those are individually using simultaneous equations. So I'll give them names, one and two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change them and add them up. So my plan will be, well, the ease would be easier, wouldn't they? So I'm going to take four of equation one and three of equation two to get the same number of E's. So multiply equation one by four. So it'll be 28P plus 12E equals, and then that will be 9600. Three of these, 9P plus 12E equals 3900. Now that I've got them the same and they've got the same sign, I can just subtract them. So I'm just going to do, I'll call it one dashed the altered one minus two dashed. So that'll just come to zero, which means this part is 19, that's a bit nasty. But that part there, luckily, 757. So P is going to be 5700 over 19. Now that is an exact number there. There's three of them, that would be like 63 short of 60. Oh, you don't use your calculator, do you? 300. P is 300. Then, no, remember, you don't put kilograms or whatever because that's just the weight in kilograms. So P is the numerical value, I think. Anyway, and then just substitute that in. So if you put that in, whichever one you looks easier, oh, put it in 2. If you put that in 2, you'll get this. 3 times 300 plus 4e equals 1300. So that means you've got 9, I'll just write it this way. So 9e is going to be the 1300 minus the 900, which is 400. Listen to all the big divisions and things. And 4 of them means that that's 100. So is this all part C? It is, isn't it? So the last part would be, now that I know those two, and of course you could check that with this one. Because you've got seven threes or 21, 2100 and 300, there's 2400. So what about Beth? So I'll put that down. Beth has got six and five, 6P plus 5E. So that would be six times the 300 plus five times the 100, so you've got 1823, and that'll be kilograms. Number 11, so it's two model aircraft, I'm not going to try and draw that, so that's just on two shapes, because all that matters is they've got a length and they've got areas, whatever area they're talking about are mathematically similar. That means one's an enlargement or a reduction of the other. The small one's 14, the big one is, where is it? The small model is 14 and the area of one wing is, I'll call that the wing they're talking about then, 24. The large model is 31. So what's the area of its wing? That's no, just ratios. The area ratio must be the square of the length ratio because you get areas by doing a length times a length and the lengths will increase by the length ratio. So you've got the ratio of the lengths which is 14 to 31.5 
from that you can get the ratio of the areas. Now it all depends whether they want you to specify the, them as whole numbers in the ratios and whether you're allowed just to use the, the numbers the way they are. Because they will, if you double that, them up, they'll produce whole numbers. I don't think I actually need to. Well, I'll, I'll do that anyway. So that would be 28 to 63. Now they both divide by 7 to give you 4 to 9. So it's actually 4 to 9. But I don't think you need to do that. Which means the area ratio is going to be 4 squared to 9 squared. So that'll be 16 to 81. And then it's just a case of, well, I want the area of the larger one. Well, how does that compare to the smaller one? Well, it's got to be bigger, so I'll put the 81 on top and the 16 underneath. And that gives you 121.5 centimetres squared. I don't know if you needed to go to whole numbers there or whether you could have just stuck with the originals. Number 12, well that's obviously going to be the scalene triangle question, sine rule or cosine rule. In diagram A, A, B and C are three checkpoints in an orienteering course. It doesn't matter really. B, it gives you, it's just given the dimensions, they're all just there. In the end it was, what's the bearing of C from B? Now the bearing from a certain place is the angle from north clockwise. So what's required is if it's C from B, it means you're standing at B, you take north and you say, how many degrees is that round? That's the required bearing. So you've got to figure out how can you get this angle? Well, obviously it's going to be, if you know this angle, you'd be able to work it out because, well, I missed out that bit of information, didn't I? I saw that somewhere. Three times, blah, 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 blah. it's east. So that's a horizontal line to the two norths. So you know that those are right angles. So if you know that angle, you get the bearing. So how can you get that angle? Well, you've got that one straight away from that 131. So if you could get that one, you could go straight to it. But it looks like the sine rule because you've got opposite pairs here. So it's going to have to be, you get this angle first. I think it'll look just to put in the diagram. So if you take that 90 away, that makes that 41 degrees. So there's a pair. 41 goes to the 200. Now that 250 will just tell me this one. So I can get this one just now. I can get angle C. So I'll just work that out. So you've got the sine rule. Now I know it's A over sine A, B over sine B, C over sine C. But that also works if you invert them, obviously. So sine C over its partner will be the same as sine A over its partner. So from that I can get sine C is going to be 250 sine 41, don't really need to put those wee degree signs in, over 200. Then you press the button and you've got 0 0.82007 and so on, which means that C is going to be the inverse sine of that. And if you could just use dittos. I'm just keeping it all in because I'm just going to use the answer function for this. I'm just going to do inverse sine answer because that's still in the calculator. And if you do that, you get 55.092 and so on. So I'll just call that 55.1 degrees. 55.1. Now you can work your way around. So from that, I can get this. So I'll call that angle B. So angle B is going to be 180 minus the sum of those two. So 83.9, you may don't need to use a calculator for that. 83.9. And now you can work it out. Remember, I'll just put that down there. That's the angle I want, so you've got two ways of doing it. You can either say 83.9 and 90 away from 360, or you could say 
take that away and you'll find this little bit here. I think I'll just do that first bit. So the bearing will be 83 and 90 away from 360. Which gives you 186, um, where am I? Point 0.1. Oops. Number 13. Solve this equation that involves fractions. Well, the first thing you do is you get rid of fractions. What could you multiply everything by that would get rid of those awkward denominators? Something that both go into 6. So if you multiply everything by 6, you'd end up with this. Well, 2 into 6 goes 3, so it'll be 3 times this. I'm left with 3 times to multiply the top. 15x plus 3. 3 into 6 goes 2, so it's 2 times the top here, which is 8x, but also two, 6 times, because there's no denominator here. 6 times all of that, so that's plus 6. Right, now just shuffle it about as normal. So 15x, bring the 8x over to join it. Leave the 6, bring the 3 over to join it. Tidy that up, that'll be 7x, and that'll be 3. Which means finally, take that 7 across and divide. 3 sevenths. In number 14 here, now there is a, a diagram, there's a picture explaining what this is about. We've got this car which rotates clockwise and the height is given by this equation here, this trigonometrical equation. But essentially it's just, this is the equation you're going to use. The diagram's not going to add anything to the solution. Well, x is the angle. Now notice the x has got a degree sign on it, so when it says the values of x, really you should just be writing down a number. But if you put a degree sign in, then they'll probably not bother with that. What was it say? Calculate the two values of x, because it goes round in a circle, so it's going to reach a height twice, once on the way up and once on the way down. Calculate the two values of x for which the height of the car is 13 metres above the ground, so it's going to hit it once there, go over the top and hit it again on the way back. What are those two angles? Right, well, I've already forgotten what it said. The height of the car is 13 metres. So that means you want that to equal 13 metres. So 13 will equal 10 minus 8 cos x. I'll bring that over. 8 cos x will be, oh, I'll just do that at the same time, take the 13 over and subtract it, which means cos x is negative 3 eighths, which means that, I didn't mean to do that, which means that x is going to be the inverse cos of negative 3 eighths. Now, you can think of a cosine graph, or you're probably just going to use your all sine tan cos here because the cosine is going to be negative. All positive cosine positive, it's either going to be here or here. So that's where the two angles will be. So it's either going to be here, short of the 180, or it's going to be here, beyond the 180. And that amount there will be determined, not by, don't bother with the sine, by just by that 3 eighths. So I'm just going to do inverse cos of 3 eighths. I'll take a note over here, 67.97 and so on, so I'll just call that 68.0 degrees, which means that's in degrees, so x itself is just the number, but you can just keep the degree signs in, I'm not going to bother with that. So the two possibilities are going to be 180 minus 68.0. I should have had this in a line, really. Or 180 plus 68.0. So the two values of x will be, for the first one, that'll be 112. 
and for the second one it's going to be 248. I'll put point zeros in. Oh, why not? You don't need the degree sign because it's not meant to have a degree, it's, it's just a number. See that? It's just a number. The degree sign was there. But if you put degrees, it's not going to make a great deal of difference. And the last one to finish off, just for two marks here, little vector diagram, pathways, finding way around. Express GF in terms of these vectors R and S. And it also tells you that DE, that line there, is three times that length. Just put a wee note. Going from D to E is three times longer than going from E to F. Or correspondingly, going from E to F is only a third of going from D to E. Well, it just means... You know, if you want GF, you need to find some way to get from G to F. Apart from just going straight there, because you want to involve the R's and the S's. There's only two routes. You can either go from G to D and along, or from G to E and along. Now, that bit's just got EF in it, and I know EF, but that bit's got the whole lot, so I think I'd rather go the EF way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go from G to E, and then I'm going to go from E to F. Whoops. Let me put a circle around that. Well, going from G to E is just S. Going from E to F, it says, is a third of that. So it's plus a third of going from D to E. Now, what is going from D to E? Well, anyway... Anything that starts from D and finishes at E is equivalent. So going from D to G and G to E is the same as DE. So it'll be a third of... Going from D to G is R, and then going... And it's with R, and going from G to E is S. DE is just the sum of R plus S. You should recognise that pattern. Well, so we're almost there. Was it saying about simplest form? So let's get rid of that little bracket. So, we as well put it in two lines. So I've got a third of R, and I've also got a third of S. I've got an S there already, so it'll be four thirds of S plus one third of R. That'll do. And you could put all sorts of forms down, and you could write, take the third out and have it as one lot of R plus four lots of S, but I think that would just do it its own.